G'day gang. Now as you know, we're in a grip of a really bad drought at the moment. There's bushfires all over the place and a lot of people are wondering how they can help wildlife. Now there's two ways that you can do that, to feed them and to water them, which I'm about to show you and the principles can be applied all over the world. But first, you've got to think about your position and understand what wildlife do in times of severe stress. They go into survival mode. So they won't be out in open areas, they won't be found in areas that have been burnt out. They'll retreat to where there's refuge, where there's cover and where it's safe for them and there's still food available. So that's where you need to do this because that's where the wildlife will be. Stay out of the burnt zones, stay out of the dry and dangerous areas, go into the forest and do this. Now the first one, particularly for kangaroos and wallabies, herbivores those that eat grasses. So when a forest fire tears through either grassland or a forest, it'll burn out a lot of their food resource and they're the first ones to suffer accordingly. So what I've done in the past in similar situations is I grab a bag of this. Now, this is horse pellets. It contains all the nutrients. Again, what we want to do here is just give sustenance to the animals. We don't want to feed them long-term. We want to carry them through until it eventually rains, then green shoots begin and they can start feeding normally. So this is great stuff. You get it out. Now what I've done in this instance is I've worked on a crossbar arrangement and we're standing in the middle of that crossbar at the moment. I'll get to that in a moment as to why. But 15 metres that way, 15 metres that way, that way and that way. Pellets are out. That way the animals will soon, overnight, they will an animal will be cruising through here, it'll, it'll find the food and it'll follow the food, it'll tell its mates and within a couple of days this place will be getting smashed. So out of that 20 kilo bag, only cost 25 bucks, um, two kilos to begin with and then taper it off from there. So you'd want to be running it, depending on the situation and how many animals, maybe three kilos, five kilos a week. Not too much but just enough to keep them going. Now. That's to bring them in because there's an end game here and that's water. It's the one thing during drought that, that wipes out thousands of animals is lack of water. And we do have a really simple solution which you at home can do. And it involves this. Initially, we've got, well, where do we start? Okay. Oop. This is just a dripper. It's a dripper that you can get from any hardware store. It's a 90 degree, dripper which is what you want because that won't put out too much water so that's the first ingredient that you need the second one is pegs now these are stainless steel pegs that can be used we'll get them out of the bag so you can see and you'll soon see why we need those the third one is your dish now I like these dishes because they're nice they've got a good 500 mil spacing they're reasonably deep, probably, you know, 50 or 60 mil. They'll actually hold quite a lot of water for a long time. And the final thing that you need is man's greatest invention since the wheel and beer, zip ties. So once you've got all of those together, plus of course, your drum, we'll show you what you'll do. I really should be running a cooking show because I have one prepared earlier. We come down here and I'll show you. Now, this is reasonably simple, but again, location is everything. If you have a look around here, you'll see this cracked ground. You can see the pellets, these guys here. That's what I've put out specifically so that animals will find the pellets, they'll follow the food and they'll find the water. The ground that I've chosen is a natural depression. And as you can see by the cracking, even though this particular site hasn't had water for six months, this is a low point. And that's where you really want to be putting your bowl, is in a low point for two reasons. One is that it'll protect the bowl from, uh, from wind, evaporation. You'll also notice that it's in the shade, so it reduces evaporation as well. But in the longer term, when it eventually does rain, this is going to fill up and it'll hold water longer than anything else because it's at the lowest point. So working back from there, once you've dug your hole out, and you'll notice that the, the ground level is here. So I've sunk it in a little bit, specifically just to be able to catch what little rain we're getting uh, to supplement 
the reservoir that I've created here. Pin it down, you'll see these stainless steel pins. Those pins are there in the event of eventually there will be a flood through here. If we didn't have that pinned in, the bowl would lift and it'd end up being a piece of rubbish further downstream. So pin it down. Then you've got your dripper. Now, you can see here, there's not a lot of, of water coming out of this reservoir and that's quite deliberate because we want it to just trickle feed. There's a drip every 10 seconds or so which is perfect because it means that you won't have to be watering this, filling up this thing every day. And more importantly, it'll provide the, the ongoing sustenance for the animals just simply by dripping. That drip alone is giving somewhere in the order of one and a half to two liters per day. I've only just set this up and I've left it empty um, so that you can see that it's just dripping. In comes the zip ties. Now the zip ties here, even though this is a 90 degree spray dripper, um, it still puts out too much water if you haven't got a zip tie there to kink it and reduce the flow. It does take a bit of mucking around, but not too much. Have a fiddle with it, get it dripping at just the right consistency, then zip it off. Again, we've put the pins in here, here and here, just to keep it down in the event of a flood. Now, that hole there is just by using one of those pins, they're perfect for creating the right sized hole to put your dripper into your reservoir. Now your reservoir will have some rocks in it and it's the same reason, not just my head with rocks, but the reservoir as well. Um, the rocks are in there because again, it'll flood sooner or later. And if we don't put weight into it, some form of ballast, um, it'll end up down the stream as well. The same with this guy, you'll see that he's zip tied to, to the top. I just have it sitting on like that. It's you don't want to seal it of course because that would stop this from flowing so it stays there as well and if we get a flood well it's not going anywhere and finally for, for council workers who might come into the bushland basically for people who don't know what this contraption is for it's worthwhile riding on there just as I've done so they understand and they just leave it alone um, you can add while well, I'm demonstrating my incredible artistic flair there for good measure as well so once all that's done you need to make sure because eventually Skippy will come through here and he and she will find uh, the water. It's the only water around here. So they'll be using this regularly. Now, you'll have seen Skippy on TV where he's been able to defuse a nuclear bomb, but he's not smart enough apparently to realize that stepping on that and disconnecting it kind of stuffs the whole thing up. So grab some rocks as I've done from just nearby cover them over like that and she's sweet. Final step, let's grab some more water and chuck it into your bowl. Fill it to the gunnels and you're set. So what will happen is that animals will find the food first. You've created effectively two transects to bring them in. They'll follow the food. Then they'll find this strange looking setup that only we know about right now, and they'll be into it like nothing else. Now, I'll have set this video to public so that you can share it, but what I'd really like you to do and what wildlife needs more than anything else is not so much social media sharing, but more so human beings caring. So I'd like you to do this. If you're going to share this video, and I hope that you do, you need to make a promise to yourself that you'll do something like this, not just click share and forget about it thinking you've helped. You kind of have, but this is what they need. So share, then care. And I'll promise you two things. If you do that, wildlife are absolutely going to love you, and so will I. Cheers.